Hey, welcome back to my office. We're gonna take the next step in growing people grow together. Now this is my office where I do a lot of study, but I gotta be honest with you, this is not the only place where I grow. Because the Bible is very clear that we can't grow in isolation, but we have to be surrounded by others to grow. In fact, I'll point it out to you. In Acts uh, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, we get a glimpse into the earliest Christians and into the earliest church. And I would encourage as an individual or as a group to study these verses. I'm not going to read all of them to you, but go back and study them. But I want to point out one verse, and that verse is verse 46. It says this, And day by day, so every day, regularly, all the time, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. Now, I want you to notice the context. They went to church together, but they also met together in their homes. So they were in two different places. They went to church, but they also discussed things that had happened in church and in life in their homes. The health of the early church was intricately tied to the larger and the smaller meeting. It wasn't either or, it was both and. And in fact, we see that all through the rest of the New Testament. There are something like 100 one another phrases in the New Testament. Uh, now, I didn't go through and count all these, but I'm told there's 194 different New Testament verses. And what that tells us from Acts chapter 2 and through the rest of the entire New Testament is that we cannot do life alone. But we must be growing together in the context of relationships with other people. Let me just point out a few of those one another's. I Just relax. I'm not going to go through all 100 here, but let me just point out a few of the other ones. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25 says this, Speak truth to one another. Likewise, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says this, Teach and admonish one another. That word admonish is kind of a big word, but here's what it means. It means warn or reprimand. So in both of those instances, Paul is telling us, to speak truth and to teach the truth to one another. It's not enough that we glean it for ourselves or that we come to church one time a week or one time a month and hear the preacher, but we have to have other people speaking that truth into our lives as well. The Bible's a big book and there's tons of things in the Bible. We can't possibly know and memorize everything in here. But other people know things we don't know, and we need them to teach us and to warn us, to reprimand us when they see things in our lives. Here's another one I'm going to share with you. James chapter 5, verse 16. This is a good one. Confess to one another. Now just think about that for a minute and what that means and the implications of that. To confess to one another. But the promise there is great if you keep reading. It says that we will be healed when we confess to one another. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens. 1 Thessalonians 4.18 says, Comfort one another. We need others in our lives to come alongside us during the times that aren't as high or aren't as healthy or aren't as joyful to be with us, to comfort us. We need others to be there during those times in our lives. I could go on and on and on about all the one another's, but I want to give you two questions that will help you take your next step. Number one, who is helping me grow? And number two, who am I helping to grow? Who's helping me grow? And who am I helping to grow? When we have others in our lives helping us grow, and in turn, we're helping others grow, we're taking the next step to growing people grow together.